Hello, I'm going to show a simple method to make a very simple prototype using a PCB, using soldering. This is a schematic we'll make. We'll use a copper clad PCB like you see there. Doesn't matter if it's one side or single side, or double side, I mean. We'll be using milling bits like these. You can use a size that suits you. I have four different sizes and uh, they look like this. You put them in something like a Dremel. I use a Proxon tool for this. And um, this is the bit I like best. Somewhere in between the biggest and the smallest one that you saw just now. So uh, if you draw the schematic on the copper clad PCB using a magic marker or something like that. It ends up like this. And you can still see what everything is. So LED is LED, transistor is transistor. And the thick black lines uh, represent zone. So this is one node in the schematic. All this copper stuff is connected together. There's a bridge between there and there that you see. So uh, these are all the components. Transistors, resistors and capacitors. There's one bridge wire which goes right there. As you see or will see it's not necessary to have a bridge wire but it makes the schematic and the PCB more readable. So this is an example of a component. It's a 4mm banana terminal uh, that doesn't fit on a breadboard. So if you want to make this schematic on a breadboard you have a problem fitting these things in because they don't fit. But uh, there's no problem when using this method. So let's go. Obviously this is a voiceover, else you would hear a shitload of sound. But uh, with a little practice you can just carve away all the all the copper that you don't want. You don't have to carve away a lot as you can see, the, you just have to isolate the nodes. It takes a little practice I guess. So um, one downside of a breadboard and even ferro board is that the isolation between the rails or the isolation between the pads is very small so if you're working with high voltages or high-ish voltages a couple of hundred volts or a thousand volts then uh, you have to put in extra work to make the isolation distance enough but right here you just carve away as much copper as you want so this is about one millimeter so that's more than enough for 250 volts you don't have to uh, follow the black wires exactly of course you can Isolate wherever you want, but uh, this seems reasonable. It's a bit of a mess. Also, there's no real risk of going through the PCB. I tested uh, this is 1.6 millimeter PCB with 35 micron copper, and I tested how much work it is to actually go through the PCB, and you you will not do that by accident. So uh, no need to worry about that. Also, if you do this on the other side, if you need to, then uh, you still won't go through the PCB. Let's check it. Everything is isolated properly because it's a pain in the ass to do this afterwards. Clean up professionally. And now uh, let's take a look at this. So here you can see the damage done by the milling bed. So everything seems to be isolated properly, only just right there, but uh, that seems fine. The edges is uh, tricky, I think you should, I should check that because that's easy to forget when the milling bed slips off the PCB. So uh, let's thin all the points where we want to solder components. There's the positive terminal, put a blob of solder there as a resistor, and so on and so on. Now one advantage maybe of this compared to ferro board is that you have probably more control about the inductance. If you want a very low impedance connection between nodes you can do so by using very wide copper trays. While on the ferro board you always have to... Uh, that is, the copper is only so and so wide so have really no control about that. Now what you see here, there's one node where I put three blobs of solder. Technically you would 
you can put one blob there and stick multiple uh, component leads in there, just fine, but I find it a little bit more easy to do it like that. One blob per component lead. So that's a transistor. I'm using a JBC soldering iron by the way, I'm not a total JBC fanboy, but uh, this is probably a soldering iron that I'll use for a long time. As an LED. Resistor, capacitor. As a bridge wire, it's gonna be there. So, uh, doesn't take that long. Advantage of this is as all the components are drawn on the board, so you know where to put what. So that looks fine. Let's uh, start soldering components onto that board. So here's a resistor, a series resistor of LED, and so on. And that's quite hot to hold with the hand. So it's easy that the components are drawn on the board already. That makes it very easy for debugging and also uh, because what I find is if you use a ferro board you are trying to mm, like the ferro board imposes a way that you have to make your uh, make your make your board make your circuit so you have to work with a ferro board instead and and by uh, using this method you can make the board look whatever way you want to make it. Uh, <laughs> you can make it look whatever you want so to make it easier for debugging and measurement you can clip a uh, oscilloscope or a multimeter wherever you want so it doesn't have to be perfect quality just if it sticks it's fine and um, so that's one transistor well, let's take a look at how that looks it's a quick preview so it looks fine. And you're only using one or I'm only using one side of the PCB, so if you need to, I don't use drilling here, but if you need to, you can use the complete other side as a ground plane or a power plane or something like that to drill a hole in towards the power plane if you want. But uh, drilling takes time, so I don't want to do that. This works fine. So another advantage maybe is that some components come with very small leads or you cut them off very short already and uh, they're too short to stick in the breadboard but uh, using this method is no problem at all. For example this, uh, not this resistor, but another resistor is, uh, has very short leads so it's no problem at all. You could do simple SMD using this, probably not much more advanced than what you can do on a ferro board, so SOT23 would probably work, but uh, big ICs would probably not work very well. You can use a adapter board of some kind. Those exist. So that's a capacitor. Almost done. So that's a bridge wire. The only bridge wire. Process that track right there. So that's all the components, I think. Check it. That looks okay. Now the terminal. Simply solder it on. We used to have wooden boards with nails hammered into it and then you solder wires and components onto the nails. So the nails represent the nodes, or rather the corners and the circuit, the circuit nodes. So your prototype would be very big, but uh, you can see everything you're doing and you can measure it very easily, you can debug it very easily. So this is sort of the same except on a PCB. So there we go. 
that's connected. Oops, that bent, but it's not a big problem. And as you can see, it works fine. So the bridge wire is where the two wires cross in the center there. That's that bridge wire, and uh, it's it's not necessary at all. It makes it it makes it a bit more readable. So you could go from that solder point underneath that resistor and then down underneath the capacitor and to the other uh, solder point. So you don't need a wire at all, but it makes it circuit a bit more readable, easier to debug maybe. So uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.